Polish-Jewish relations in Warsaw during the First World War, I think you uh, could say, uh, were going to deteriorate uh, uh, during the war. Uh, this was part of a, uh, a downhill slide that began oh, towards the end of the 19th century. It was going to accelerate in the years right uh, before the First World War. Uh, there had been a, a, a a number of contentious issues in Jewish-Polish relations in Warsaw uh, uh, about representation on uh, in institutions uh, of self-government. Uh, there was a boycott, of, uh, a Polish boycott of Jewish businesses in 1912-1913, uh, which was part of this larger, uh, larger uh, uh, argument. Uh, so, you know, relations were tense before the war. Uh, they were going to get worse during the war. And uh, that, like I said, that downhill slide in Polish-Jewish relations will continue to accelerate through the interwar period and, in, and then, uh, then into, the, into the Second War, and in fact will continue uh, beyond, uh, uh, beyond the Second World War. So that's, this is part of a larger, larger story of uh, you know, a, a downhill slide in Polish-Jewish relations. But it's not just a Polish story. That that's also a, an East Central European story. Uh, uh, that's that's not just confined to confined to Poland. Anyway, uh, initially, uh, uh, when the war broke out uh, uh, in Warsaw, uh, Poles and Jews were able to set aside their differences at least for the first couple of uh, uh, of months, uh, in, in an effort to establish a kind of common or unified home front uh, behind the cause of, uh, of Russian arms. So there are these instances of collaboration and maybe camaraderie is, is perhaps uh, 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 an exaggeration, but at least some cooperation. So we see Poles and Jews working together to build uh, field fortifications uh, uh, in September of 1914. Uh, in anticipation of a possible German uh, uh, attack on the city. When, there is, when uh, the first ra wave of refugees arrives in, in Poland, uh, or in Warsaw, uh, from uh, the western part of the Polish kingdom, from the Kalish region, for example, there's really sort of no distinction made between, you know, uh, about the nationality uh, of these, these refugees. Uh, Poles and Jews were sort of treated equally in, 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 in their reception uh, by, uh, by uh, civil uh, society institutions in Warsaw and by, uh, by public opinion. Uh, when uh, the uh, first German assault on Warsaw is repulsed in October of 19, 1914, uh, both Poles and Jews hold these Thanksgiving services in you know, the main symbolic uh, places of worship uh, in the city, uh, which would have been St. John's Cathedral and, and the Tomatsky Street Synagogue. So uh, you know, those first few months of the war, we see, uh, I, I don't know, Poles and Jews acting at least in, 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 in support of a, a common cause. Uh, but that doesn't last very long. Uh, and so we're going to go back to the larger trend in Polish-Jewish relations, which was deterioration. Uh, and uh, one reason for this was that the economic crisis is going to hit Warsaw uh, very, very quickly. Uh, Warsaw uh, relied for its supply of coal on uh, the Dombrova Basin, which is adjacent to, to upper, uh, adjacent to, uh, to Silesia. And uh, once the Germans take that within you know, the first weeks of the war, <coughs> that coal supply to Warsaw is going to be, going to be shut off. When you, your industry, uh, and Warsaw industry was dependent on coal uh, for its energy, that's going to lead almost immediately to, to, to massive un unemployment. And uh, with massive unemployment, then you're going to have some debates over access to public assistance. So, uh, so basically, there are going to be these these disputes over over uh, over who should have access uh, to to public assistance, who should have access to uh, to employment agencies. Uh, the Warsaw Citizens Committee, which was an NGO established at the time, was going to establish employment agencies to find work for the for the unemployed. 
Well, since because the, the, the industrial labor force was largely Polish uh, uh, in ethnicity, um, uh, a lot of the support would go, therefore, to Polish workers uh, rather than to, than to Jewish workers. In fact, there, there are some instances with, where Poles and Jews uh, actually uh, skirmish uh, uh, at these employment agencies and, and trying to get access to these, to these rare jobs. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so there were those kinds of issues. Uh, there were issues over uh, landlord-tenant relations. Uh, a lot of the, well, a good proportion of, uh, of, of rental property uh, was owned by, uh, by Jews in Warsaw, uh, but the number of tenants who, uh, who found themselves unemployed and without, uh, without, uh, without wages uh, uh, you know, couldn't pay their rent, and so there were these kinds of these kinds of tensions, uh, and uh, the press on both sides uh, would would uh, would support uh, either either landlord or the tenant in these disputes. Uh, then there were uh, 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 rumors of Jewish hoarding, uh, hoarding of first of coin, then of coal, uh, in an effort to to jack up uh, jack up prices and to speculate. Uh, so there were there were uh, there were these uh, rumors of Jewish hoarding, Jew Jewish speculation, Jewish profiteering, uh, uh, price gouging, uh, all those all those kinds of economic centered issues uh, 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 and disputes uh, were, were part of this deterioration in, in, in Polish Jewish relations. Uh, another was the association of Jews with Germans. Uh, and this began primarily with uh, the, the Russian army that, uh, uh, in fact, if you look at any sort of Russian government and the Russian army, if you look at any of the documents from this time, they're very concerned about Jewish spies, uh, Jewish spies and Jewish uh, uh, saboteurs. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, this, is, this is an invention, uh, but it's one that was believed. Uh, uh, by by uh, Russian uh, Russian officialdom and, and particularly uh, officers in the Russian Russian uh, army, uh, so the war is accompanied by a spy scare, uh, uh, by and then uh, shortly thereafter by expulsions uh, of entire Jewish communities from from a number of small towns. Uh, the uh, the Russian government is going to close the Yiddish language press uh, in Warsaw. Uh, because they actually believed that uh, uh, that somehow in the Yiddish language press that uh, information was being passed on uh, uh, to to the Germans uh, 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 about uh, the uh, the location of, uh, of Russian troops and Russian Russian defenses. Uh, anyway, the Russian army's treatment of the Jews uh, as spies, as people who couldn't be trusted. Uh, the, the, these massive expulsions of tens and eventually hundreds of thousands of people, uh, the, the closing of, uh, uh, of Jewish press organs, all this became eventually a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. So the, when uh, uh, the Germans finally did take Warsaw in, in August of 1915, uh, Jews, for a good, good cause, are, are not unhappy to see the Russians go. Uh, and this doesn't necessarily mean they, 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 uh, they, they looked at the Germans as liberators, but they were going to be more sympathetic uh, to, to, uh, to the, the German, uh, the arriving Germans than, than the Poles. Uh, the Poles, if, as I mentioned last night, uh, were going to remain uh, uh, sympathetic uh, uh, towards Russia and towards the cause of Russian arms and antipathetic uh, towards uh, towards Germans, uh, and this uh, was going to continue uh, 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 months uh, after uh, after the Russian evacuation of, uh, uh, of Warsaw. Uh, 